Pamela says, I thought a person is penalized doing taxes if not contributing to 401k plan. How am I being penalized if I don't contribute to my 401k plan? Let's go over that. I think that's a huge misconception, right? Because obviously you don't get the deduction, right? Off your taxes. Um, but most people, over 85% of people in the United States aren't even filling out their W-4s properly in the first place. So that's one issue. So let's, you know, let's handle that first. Okay. So let's take, let's, let's make sense of Pamela's issue here. Because there's so many people, I would say, the 40 and up crowd that are, you know, stuck to that 401k mentality. And it's really beating you up, especially with taxes. You guys are so afraid of taxes. I don't know. It's nothing to be afraid of. You just got to learn the system. You know, they created it to subdue you. So you would surrender. And you have to understand that if you're born of the kingdom then you have to understand how to live in a kingdom so that you can operate outside of that kingdom and establish your own. So it's very important for you to understand how these systems work. So whatever your, what was that? Let me go back to it so I don't lose the thought. So 401k plans, right? Your W-4, you got to fill that out properly, people. Make sure you're filling that out properly. That's step one. 401k plan when you reduce it or just completely cut it off, right? Reduce or cut off. You lose the deduction, right? You lose the deduction. And then, so you lose the deduction because you're showing more income, right? So if you show more income, then you have to pay more taxes, right? Okay, so we understand that. Now, if I have more cash flow to work with and my intention for my life is to become debt free, and if I do the math, if I can mathematically show that even with the increase of what you'll pay in tax, as long as this is filled out properly, then you're not overpaying on taxes, nor are you underpaying. It's a, it's a even, even Steven, right? So you won't owe the IRS anything. The IRS doesn't owe you anything when this is filled out properly. Okay. So, Coming back to this, you reduce your 401k or cut it off. So yes, tax does go up because you're showing more income. But if we were able to take that extra income to pay off debt, right? And according to the math, I would save more in interest. So what's happening is I'm getting more use out of those dollars, All right? So if I can save more in interest than you would earn in that 401k, wouldn't that make sense? Think about it. I have the money now. You putting that money in the 401k, you don't get access to it till you're 59 and a half, right? And that number could go up, right? The retirement age or whatever, that number could go up. I'm sure it will because people are living longer. So I would save more interest now, which would increase my cash flow now, which would then position me to 10x, right? Or invest now rather than later, right? So that is something to definitely consider, right? Um, and then here's the other thing. I mean, we can just kind of write it out. Let's say you're let's say you're contributing I don't know 10k a year to your 401k. So let's say they're taking 10k divided by 12 
eight, nine hundred bucks from your paycheck, whatever it is, it's going into the 401k. And let's say you're gonna earn 8% on that money in your 401k. Tax deferred, and you'll have money till you are, you know, have access to it till you're 59 and a half is when you can pull from it. So I'm gonna Google something real quick. And you guys should do this if you have retirement plans, if you have qualified retirement plans and you're considering whether or not I should reduce or cut these off to do velocity banking to pay off debt really fast, build a policy 10x, all that good stuff. You want to see what is your current cost of investing right now. And that might make you knock it off because you'd be like, what? Am I really paying that? So average cost of 401k plans per year. Let's see what I get. Let's see what comes up. Okay. Um, if you read the book by Tony Robbins called Money Master the Game, he does talk about this. And he says how I think the average 401k plan from his book is one to three percent in fees, you know, admin fees, annual fees. This is all stuff that you do not read that's on your 401k statement or maybe on the uh, the the sheet or whatever that they send your way, the, the 401k contract, whatever it is, right? So if I earn 8% on 10K in, in the 401k plan, right? So the first year I put 10K in and I earn 8%, that's $800, right? So I, so, I, so I earned eight for that whole year. Okay. Let's say we'll go right in the middle, call it 1.5%. You have to understand that you have you have flat fees. So just in general, you have flat fees and then there's annual fees. Flat fees are cheaper than annual fees. Annual fees are based off the total amount of money that's in that account. Whereas a flat fee is based off whatever goes in initially. You have both in 401k plans. So 1.5% on 10,800 equals $162. So let's say your cost first year, right? It's $162. Okay. And you know, you, you earned eight, but you get, you you paid one sixty two in fees. Now here's where here's where things get very interesting. And this is the danger when you have a 401k plan. Okay, let's say the second year we put another 10K in. So 10K plus 10K is 20,000 plus the 800, all right? Times that by another 8% return. That's $1,664. So the second year you earn 1,664. So 1,664 plus the 20,000 in principal money that went in there plus the $800, that's $22,464. $22,464 times that by 1.5%, okay? So your cost on your 401k plan the second year is $336.96. So your cost increased. Now that may not seem like a lot, but I dare you to keep going. Fund it for 10 years, 15, 20, 30 years and see how your fees will eat away at your profits. And then the worst thing that could happen, right? To your 401k is that it goes down. 
in terms of the returns, right? So let's say the third year is a bad year of your 401k. Let's say you earn nothing, okay? But you put in 10k, so you just broke even, you earn nothing. So 10k went in, you know, plus the 22464. So that's $32,464 times 1.5%. Even if you lose money in your 401k plan, the 401k managers, the company still has to get paid for managing your account that did not perform well. So guess what? That year is higher, 486.96. And that would affect the actual balance of the account itself. It would go down, right? And the other worst thing is worse, worse than breaking even is when you actually lose money. So, you know, they say, okay, I'm, I'm down 8% or I'm down 10%. That's 10% of your entire account or 5% of your entire account. So let's just say the fourth year, right? I lose 10% of my net worth in the 401k. And that's not bad of a loss. I mean, there's people that have lost 50%. 25% in one shot, you know, in one quarter in a, in a year during their, you know, people have showed it to me. They tell me their, they tell me their war stories with 401ks and it does not sound fun. So the fourth year I put in another uh, 10,000, right? So we've got the 22,464, 464 plus 10,000 plus another 10,000. All right, so let's say I got, I got 42, this round. So I got 42K in there in the fourth year, but I lose 10% of the account. So I would lose 4,000 to 46.40, right? So I would lose that if I, if I lost 10%, 10% loss. Well, guess what? The fourth year, you still have to pay fees on the account. The administration fee, the annual fee, the management fee, the broker fee, the this fee, the that fee, and the other, and the other fee, right? So I, not only did I lose 10%, but then I also got to pay 1.5 on the entirety of the account. So 42,000, let me just minus 4K, right? I got 38 left. 38,000 times 1.5%. Look, it's still higher than the other year. It's still higher than the previous year, so 570, right? And now, when you lose in an account, a qualified retirement account, the amount of time that it took to lose, it's going to take double, triple the amount of time to actually get out to not only break even, but to actually get back in line, get ahead, right? So you would have, you would have to earn not only the 10% the next year to break even, but you have to earn more because of the fees, plus you have to actually earn more to actually profit, to say, okay, I profited, right? So when they say that you're gonna get an average rate of return of 8%, or an average rate of return of 12, 15, 20, whatever it is, you got to understand that you can do math where if you, um, you know, so if I have 100K and I go and I go up 100% in year one, so I would have 200K. <laughs> and then the second year, second year, I lose 50%, okay? So I lost 50% of 200K. What's 50% of 200? 1,000, 100,000. So you needed to earn 100% to earn 100,000, but you only need to lose 
50% to go right back to where you started. So now you're down to 100K in the second year, right? And then the third year you do it again, right? You go up, you go down, you go up, you go down. If you earn 100, lose 50, earn 100, lose 50, earn 100, lose 50, I think the average rate of return is 25% positive, right? But you would be at the same number though. Get it? So that's kind of like how your 401k would perform. Now there's no doubting that you can certainly earn a lot of money in a 401k plan. No doubt at all. I believe it. I've seen 401k plans. A million, 1.5, 2 million, uh, 500,000. Great. The problem is I don't get access to that till I'm 59 and a half right? And then when I do get access to it, now I must pay taxes. Taxes will always be higher now than they, uh, taxes will always be higher in the future than they are now. So they're, they're always going to keep going up, right? So with that being said, not only did I pay fees all those years of funding, but then I got to pay taxes on the gains of that money as personal income tax. Ordinary income is the highest tax rate. So you're getting taxed at the highest tax rate when you're 59 and a half, right? And then on top of all that, when you factor in, in addition to your 1 to 3% in cost, whatever your rate of return is, losses and gains, profits and losses, things like that, but you also have to factor in this guy inflation two percent or three percent whatever inflation is one percent whatever the inflation number is that's another number that is eating away at your returns on that 401k so it's so the the value of 1.5 million dollars when you're 59 and a half will would be worth maybe a half a million dollars of purchasing power today you know, or some, however that works. Basically, however much money you have today, it's going to purchase you less things tomorrow. So you can only imagine 10, 20, 30 years down the road, the purchasing power of 1.5 million is going to be a lot less, right? And that really sucks. Now, on top of that, you got to pay taxes, right? So, you're looking at the surface going back to Pamela's question. Oh, you know, I'm going to get paid. I'm going to pay taxes now. I'm going to get hit on that. But what I look at is the is the is under the roots. I look at the roots. I look at the end result. What do I get for putting 10,000 a year away? 8% return, 12% like it what do I really get? When do I get to use that money? How can I access that money and, you know, make sense of it? So, you know, it's something to think about. Remember, like I said yesterday, I said that every financial concept is correct, right? If you put 10000 a year in, you'll average 8% return. It's correct. You'll end up with, uh, I don't know, $1, $2 million in, in, you know, when you're 59 and a half. I don't know what you're going to do with $1 million, $2 million dollars. Uh, you're going to have to take a monthly residual stream of income from that, which is only going to last till you're 80, maybe, right? So you'll outlive that 401k plan that you funded your whole life. That sucks. So you got to look at everything when you're, wherever you put your money, you want to look at everything. Very important. 